This class, funny enough, was actually in, in, inspired by uh, Gunbjorn. Um, okay. There was a conversation that occurred where I didn't get it. I was the one being asked questions, and I didn't get it. Because it was so fundamentally a part of what I do, I didn't understand the problem for somebody who wasn't trained. <laughs> and so about halfway into the conversation, about half an hour into the conversation, I went, oh, oh, that problem. And that problem is that we regularly train people in SCA Rapier to fight in tournaments. This is a good thing. Nothing wrong with it. That's the way it should be. We should train them. But what we forget, and then we tell them, hey, let's go fight melee. And when we fight melee, we teach them tactics. We teach them commands. We teach them how to follow commands. We teach them how to execute commands. We teach them a little bit of tactics. And we do all this other stuff. And these are good lessons. There's something missing. And what is missing is that we're not teaching them how to use their weapons and their other devices in melee. We're not teaching them how to fight the fight of melee with their weapons. And so what this class is, is a class about, this is how you fight single sword in melee. This is how you fight sword and dagger in melee. It's about the individual fencer being able to use the correct weapons style in melee the correct way so they don't die in droves. If you fight like you normally fight with case and you walk around and you do this and you're in a line, you're hosed. You can't walk around. And if you stand like this, fighting case, and I go to stab that guy like a normal, I'll parry this and I'll stab there, his two buddies are gonna kill me. It doesn't work. It's about learning to adapt those fighting styles so that you can work in concert with somebody else, your own team member, in melee. That's what this class is about. And we're going to go through all five styles, assuming, of course, we can. So, uh, come on in, step on into the, uh, the area, kind of get, get behind the ropes, on this side of the ropes, if you can. If not, stay on that side, that's fine. My request is that if we're, when we actually get to the point where we're going to start stabbing at people, bring your get, put your mask on. Until then, I don't care. Uh, we are not going to be combating, combating, so you do not need to be authorized to be here. Uh, so if you want to take the class, come on in. All right. What are the five forms? Single sword, sword and dagger, case, uh, hard parry, and soft parry. Yep. Pretty much it. Pretty simple. Um, sooner or later, you're going to run into somebody that says, such and such style sucks. Don't ever fight melee or such and such style. I am one of those people, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, if you're going to fight single sword and melee, because it's the only thing you've got. You are an asset. And so what he says, granted, you probably die a lot, but you are an asset. There are a lot of people out there like, oh, single sword sucks, just die to melee, you'll die in droves, don't fight single sword melee. Bring your best game. Yeah. You always need it. Bring your best game. Your best game single? And if your only game is definitely your best game, yeah. fight single. Go ahead and form a line on that side for me. I'm single sword. Now, everybody here is a semi-experienced fencer, but I'm going to say things anyway just because, well, we do have a camera. Okay. All right. In a melee, you do not attack your primary attack. Your primary attack is not the person directly in front of you. The reason for that is, is I'm going to be killed by his buddy. So what I want to do is attack diagonally. Because in theory, I have one person on each side of me. So if I attack him, this person can defend me against them. That person can attack me, but this person can defend me. And so if I attack these guys, I'm good. No, I was going to say, you've been just kind of a little No, I was thinking. Diagonal. Yes. The person that's in front of me is the person I can attack. But it's an attack of opportunity. It is not an attack of primary choice. Make sense? So, if you're fighting single, yeah, if I, let if me know. Into you don't who square up like this. Okay. Go uh, ahead cool. and square up like that real quick. Look what it does to the side. All of a sudden, I have big openings over here. Okay. Right? And those openings mean it's easier for me to have a buddy carry this away while I stab there. Because you can't, you can't cover him as well. 
So you want to have, you don't want to create those gaps. So if I'm single sword, the best thing I can be doing is actually this. I want to use this too, now. Yes. Since nobody else brought toys with them yet. Yeah, is I'm going to be here, and he's going to try and kill one of my buddies. No. He's going to try and kill my other buddy. No. My job with single sword is to be a defense person. If, go put your mask down real quick just in case. If he goes to stab somebody, that's not me, and I get an attack of opportunity, yeah, I'll take it. But my primary job is going to be push other people's blades away. And I want to push them down. Because a lot of people take to push them up. Gravity works. Might as well make it work against your bonus. If I bring your sword up, it's easier for you to bring it online. If I bring it down, it's harder. Both work. Take what you can get. But when given the choice, down is better. Yep. Yep. Down is just better. So that's what single sword can do in an arm. The really, and funny enough, it's really effective. That single sword person's job is to stay alive and keep their buddies alive. When you do that, it's kind of like getting a plus one. Plus one never hurt anyone, except the opponent. So um, if you have toys, please grab them. Besides, you know, if you don't, I don't know if there's a certain available. I don't know. But they left it there. <laughs> All right. So that's single sword. Can you give me your cane? Yeah, sure. I'm not quite sure. Last year we didn't have it there. And it was not super like that. None of yeah, none of us are with sword and dagger, I become slightly more of a defensive person, but only slightly more. I actually have a better chance of being a defensive person now in a line. Now, there are a lot of people who tell you sword and dagger is not for people in a line. No right. In my personal opinion, fighting sword and dagger in a line is not a good idea. However, not fighting in a line is for people who are more experienced in the idea of what they're doing. And so, a lot of people end up in a line fight, and so this class is mostly a people who are in a So that's what we're keeping. So if we're fighting sword and dagger, and I've got two people on the line side of me, I now can, if he goes to attack over there, I can carry here and shoot there. I have become slightly more effective as an attacking person. And if you go to attack me, I don't have to worry about carrying here anymore. I can carry there and keep an eye on you. I own your blade because it's in contact. I'm good. Now I have to worry about you. It turns into more of a regular, what I consider a more regular melee fight. So having a dagger is handy. If you actually ever stab somebody with a dagger in a melee, let me know. <laughs> it happens. I think I've never been stabbed by a dagger. Yeah, it's really flipping rare. Because, exactly, ninjas, they're everywhere. It does happen. It's rare. However, it's a really excellent deterrent. It really is. It's amazing. We're fighting, we're fighting. And, all right, you guys decide that you're going to take that extra, you're going to take that advanced top step. Huh, I do this, and this really goes, hey, there's a tip there. It's a deterrent. I'm never going to get to you. Your response is, I stagger. What? Oh, yeah, typical man tactic in any time you find another rapier and you're in a position where you need to get back in control. Put a tip in the face. They will pay attention to it. Funny enough, I get, a, I get a tip in my face. I pay a lot of attention to it. And that allows you to maintain control. It works in melee. And funny enough, if I, I'm not going to do with this because you're too far away. So this guy will keep me alive. So as you all advance a step, and I go, hi. Look what happens. He stayed there. You two have lost your point. And now, 
because he stayed back, I could do this. Almost with him too. So, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it works with the dagger. Not as well as it works with the dagger. So, the normal stance we see with certain daggers, stuff like this, right? What's wrong with this stance? People on my side. Ah, big opening. Huge openings everywhere. And honestly, all he has to do is reach over and pull the sword down. And now I have no hope of hell with it. I am dead. Boy, I better. So, which is why we don't fight against the guy across from us. Right here. Nice man over there. Nice man over there. Nice this changes the geometry a whole lot. And if I have somebody here doing the same thing, the, the focus changes completely on how it gets So, that's uh, Sword and Dagger. Pace of Dagger in a melee? No. We don't discuss it. The answer is no. All right. So next thing with the blade, if I can borrow some of the sword. When you fight case, there's a whole lot of this going on, or a whole lot of this, switching around. Well, I got a lot of people. You can't do this. So with case of rapier, this is what the fusion parts fight. It's what we do. When you see a case line of case of rapier people coming out, their job is to be a lawnmower, your job is to be the grass. Make your own really decision how you're going to fix that if you're on the receiving net. But this is the tap. It's a V. And imagine an entire line of people going all at the same time. Now, if we're smart, left hand goes low, right hand goes high, or vice versa. Because that way, when I shoot high here, this one's gone low. We're not crossing each other's way. There's another tap to pick up. We're here, we face up, bring the swords up. Left, stab, right. Imagine your sword just got parried. So, again, carry left, your sword goes down, your sword goes down, stab right. Imagine the entire front line of people doing this. How quickly is the opposing force going to die and die in droves? Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nine tenths will get you. Eight percent will get you. Carry left, stab right. Gorgeous, gorgeous tackle. If we had more people, we'd actually try to get a lot more. It just makes a lot more sense because with those inner blocking field of fire, you can still defend yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 usually there's two stores still focus on one and you're wide open. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or your job is to kill him. My job is to make him, you know, I kill him, you kill him, you both kill him. Now, between the two of you, who has the best job of killing him? Me. Yep. So, if I realize that this is the problem, and I have a sword in my left hand, I don't. I still have a shoulder problem, so I'm not going to put it there. Imagine that's my left-handed sword. Now you just kill him. Yeah. yeah, or he backs out of the line. Thank you. Yeah, I know. And I stab both of his partners. I'm good. I'll get two for one. And him bringing that shield around his defense against me opens him up to... Means I die horribly. Yeah. 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 You just die horribly to a different his, his Yep. Is I'm good with this. Yeah, I mean, if I do this, I have no chance at all. I might be able to disengage with this. Maybe. Possibly. Yep. So it is really it is important as a person who's carrying the shield to try and be as stationary as possible. When you start throwing that shield around, you're killing your friends. Not yourself, killing your friends. And in the melee, the least amount of death, all the things being equal, the side who dies the least wins the most. It doesn't matter if it's a res battle, it doesn't matter if it's not a res battle, the side that dies the least wins the most. Funny how that works. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, that's where it is. I need to borrow that back. Is this a legitimate way to fight the melee? Yep. Yeah, it's just like a sword and dagger, except it's much longer now. Little well, hook is annoying. Lock, 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 stab. Yep, absolutely wonderful. All right. Now for soft rigid. What? You know, it's going to close with me. The reason why is, is that if you're fighting soft, if you're fighting non rigid pairing device, and you fight in my line, I gotta step back and DFT you. First, I'll tell you to get out of my line. Then I'll step back and DFT you. Why is that? It only gets in your own side's way. Yeah. Even if I fight with the cloak out here where it belongs the right way, the period way. I'm screwing this guy up. What if you are? No, because to correctly use this here, I need to take it and flip it around. So flip it around, this guy is screwed. You wear, I'm hurting my side more than I'm hurting my opponent's side. Is there a proper way to use a non repairing device in a melee? Yes. Nowhere near the line. And I still think it's stupid. My personal opinion. However, they're not hurting their line when they're doing it. They're perfectly classic for line. Oh, yeah, like so, okay. You can. Watch out, watch out, Ethan. I highly recommend against it. Uh, Bjorn from uh, up in Sternfeld, because he's done it in a way it's fun. I haven't seen it. I don't know how it works for him, but I think it's pretty bad, but it's better than seeing that. But. Okay. So, we've discussed how to fight them, now we've discussed how to defeat them. Any questions so far? Alright. So, how do you defeat the single sword? Pretty simple. Okay. I can only parry one sword at a time. I need to get Gumby on his, my, my, my hard case. Stick back. Ready? I can only do this one at a time. I can only get one at a time, so you both go to attack. I gotta hurt somebody. And yeah, I'm gonna use my hand. I'm gonna die. One goes low, one goes high, eventually I just die. That's pretty simple. Sword and dagger's different. How do you defeat sword and dagger? Gross misallocation of resources. Gross misallocation of resources. I'm not that big a threat. I'm good. I remember that these are hearts. Sword and dagger, I am not that big of a threat in the line. I am that big of a threat over there. Not in the line. In the line, I'm not that big of a threat. How do you defeat them? Go all the way around. Who's it? Emma? Missy! Missy! Over here! You have range on me. You can poke me all day long. What does that make your job and your job? Fine. Yeah. And really quickly, it's fine. So they go fine. And his job is to crap. And I block here, and you just die. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Granted, it's a one for one, so it's not really a bad exchange. You don't want to do that, though. So if you guys go to bind, okay, fine. I'm here. So now that I'm here, lift, lift the short. It's that, not, not that, it's put straight up. It's that me here. The worst that's going to happen is I come forward, and as I come forward, what do you do? You either speed. 
Walk oh. this one down. And now I just... Oh. Is this a three on one? You want a melee? Um, I am finishing. Huh. His Majesty would like to melee. Anybody would like to go? Go with His Majesty. You have seen it? You have done it? Go have some fun. I am not fully alarmed. Neither am I. I have uh -huh. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty is always the right answer. <laughs> Unless His Majesty has asked you a question. Oh, sure. the answer well, the answer. Answer. That one was not. Well, we already discussed uh, how to defeat the shield. Yeah. So, not I gotta go get. What are you doing over here? I was teaching a melee class. Oh, okay. I had His Majesty go out to do.